the th third UML2 chart type are the interaction diagrams. The interaction diagrams include communication diagram, which was earlier called collaboration diagram in UML1, interaction overview diagram, which is a sort of diagram of diagrams, uh, which was added in UML2, sequence diagram and timing diagram, which was also added in UML2. So, the communication diagram, or as it's known in the earlier documentation as collaboration diagram, it describes a dynamic behavior in a message-oriented manner, meaning that it models the interaction between objects in typical scenarios. This means that if we have something, uh, some happening, such as use case or activity on our system, we can illustrate the ac actions and the order of messages in way of communication diagram. The idea here is that we number each of the activities and the order in which the messages go and which message is sent from which object to another. So basically it's uh, something that's usable by programmers or usable by testers to see that everything happens in order or if there's an out of sync activity we might have an idea where the problem started. The interaction overview diagram is a form of forms as said earlier. It's basically an activity diagram with references to different other diagrams of the system. Uh, it was added in UML2 to add more support and functionality to uh, define connections between different diagrams since the, since the only earlier tool found in UML1 was the, uh, was the package diagram which isn't that much into details. Basically I have uh, only rarely seen this diagram type, but still I, I consider it useful information when documenting something larger which has the appropriate amount of UML diagrams defined for it. The sequence diagram, as illustrated here, is other way of showing how objects or actors and objects communicate with each other. The sequence diagram was at first defined as the only diagram type which had timing as its one of its main components. The idea is that the sequence diagram shows the dynamic behavior of one activity or one set of messages in a time-oriented manner. The case always starts from the upper left corner and the sequence goes forward going downward. So always when the message arrow is below one arrow it means that it happens after that activity and if there's two arrows which are parallel it means that they happen at the same time. For added readability or usability the UML2 really only did add a couple of options to sequence diagrams. It allowed iterations and conditions, meaning for and e for loops and if else structure to exist in one sequence diagram so that we don't have to draw several diagrams but we can actually define something like uh, successfully giving a correct password or faulty password in one diagram. Actually also one thing that's really important to observe, uh, notice is that communication diagram and sequence diagram has mostly similar type of information. But the only difference is that the communication diagram illustrates the activity in a more readable form from the viewpoint of what parts of the system are involved in the activity and giving a vague reference on the order of activities whereas the sequence diagram gives the idea of order of activities but has quite low readability on the parts that uh, participate in the action. Uh, 
sequence diagram is usually associated with things like starting a net network connections or handshake sequence for client and host to communicate with each other. And if we want to go more into details, there's also a timing diagram added by UML2, which gives us more information on how much time things take and is actually used in real-time embedded designs. The idea here is that we can see the amount of time it takes to process the information, the amount of time it takes to transmit the information, and we by using these uh, diagrams we can see that for example our embedded system for air brake anti-lock brakes is, brakes has enough processing power so that there will be no situations when where we have transmitting sensors but we don't have access to the uh, data processing capabilities such as processor or, or memory services so basically this is also kinda uh, rare diagram, but in the industries where these sort of things has to be thought, it's also a really nifty tool since it's uh, something that really didn't exist prior to the UML2 added definitions.